act in the art of reamping has been a foundational part of the studio experience basically since the existence of the studio experience. From things as fundamental as the namesake itself, the act of capturing your dry guitar send when recording and reamping it through your amplifier, getting your cabinet, mic, and effect choices just right without having to re-perform that guitar part a thousand times, through to more modern and experimental concepts like taking your digital VST instruments and running them through outboard gear to give them character, warmth, grit, and dynamics. The ability to reamp in your studio is pretty much essential these days, especially if you want to get really creative with leveling up your recordings and your productions. And to that end, we are here today talking about the Walrus Audio Canvas Reamp, a simple, straightforward, and pretty highly flexible reamping solution. And the feature set here is incredibly simple and straightforward. You have an XLR or a quarter inch input from your interface, basically getting the audio from your project on your computer into this box, and then a quarter inch output to your pedal board, your amplifier, or whatever else you're using. And next to that, you have a volume knob so that you can kind of get your level right as you're hitting that first gain stage on your pedal board or whatever else. And on the back, you have four incredibly simple and useful little quality of life additions. You have a ground lift for solving for noise and ground loops. You have a mute switch, which is actually incredibly useful here. Uh, if you're making changes to your signal path, you can mute this rather than having to go to your DAW and mute a channel in your DAW. Uh, you have a phase shift for solving for phase issues as you're ramping, especially if you're reamping things in parallel. And you have a high pass filter basically to solve for any low rum rumble you might be getting from something in your signal chain. And that's Canvas Reamp. That's the what here. Let's talk about the how. Uh, we'll show you kind of how I connect into this from my DAW and where I send it in my pedal board or anywhere else in the studio. And then we will dive into my DAW and take a look at how I configure my system to send and receive the audio correctly. For my demonstrations, we're going to be using Universal Audio's Luna DAW, but the fundamentals are the same across the board and I will include information on how to hook up to Pro Tools or Logic as well. So let's start by hooking up the Canvas Reamp to our recording interface. I'm using the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X, and that has two XLR ins, two outputs dedicated for my monitors, and two dedicated line outputs for uh, additional outputs for headphones or uh, other mixes, or in this case for reamping. If you have a more compact interface, something like the Universal Audio Solo that I use for traveling that doesn't have those additional outputs, you can use the kind of dedicated monitor outputs. You can use the left channel or the right channel of those to accomplish the same thing. So for either recording setup, all you have to do is take an instrument cable and plug it into your interface's output, and then take the other end of that line, plug it into the input, on your canvas. If your DAW has an XLR, you can use the XLR instead. Then just take your instrument cable, hook it to the output port of the reamp box, and run it to the front of your pedal board. Reamping in Luna is fairly straightforward. All you really have to do is select your audio source that you are looking to process. Switch over from this edit view over to your mixer window. Uh, scroll down to your cues and select line three, four. I like using the kind of drop down menu from there for a little bit more granular control. You're gonna wanna make sure that fader is all the way up to the level that you're trying to send at. From there, go ahead and create a new track. Uh, I'm creating a stereo track because my returning signal is in stereo. Uh, go back up to your inputs, select your return source and then record enable that track. Go ahead and hit record and let the audio process through in real time, being able to make any changes you want along the way. To reamp in Logic, you're going to want to take your audio source and select its output channel to be whatever you're outputting to. For me, with my Apollo Twin, I'm using lines 3, 4, so I will set those as my output channel. In Logic, that'll automatically create a new fader for that output. From there, you'll create a new audio channel, set the input source as whatever your returning source is, record enable, and process your audio.
to reamp in Pro Tools, select an empty slot in your Sends tab and select the output you have your Canvas reamp connected to. Uh, from there, you want to open up that little fader. Make sure that you are setting it to pre and have your fader up and then create a new audio track. Select the input from that track to be your return source, record enable, and process your audio as usual. So now that everything's wired up and configured correctly, let's talk about why we might do this. We're gonna take a look at three specific use cases in this video. Use case number one is going to be straight up guitar reamping with a twist. That song we heard at the start of this video, we did all of that using a guitar plugin on my laptop. It sounds great, it's a great plugin. Uh, there's incredible value to being able to kind of sit down with your laptop and record great sounding guitar anywhere in the world in the modern era. But there are limitations to digital plugins in terms of what sounds they can recreate. Your pedal board has your sounds and you want access to those even if you don't have immediate access. So we captured a drag guitar send and we are gonna process it through my pedal board, but like I said, with a twist. Because the guitar part is already written and performed, we can do things like manipulate our pedals in real time. We can do something like take the Walrus Audio Melee and move that joystick while we play back the guitar. And it will make adjustments to those parameters in real time as we record new audio. Similarly, we can take the Strymon Volante and make changes to the delay speed in interesting and subtle or unsubtle ways. So let's give it a listen and kind of reamp some of those guitars. Use case number two, as alluded to earlier in this video, is the ability to take somewhat sterile sounding digital plugins and give them warmth and character and something interesting and more than you would be able to get inside your DAW or inside the plugin itself. Uh, that piano is the Ravel piano from Universal Audio, and it is a very pretty good sounding piano. And I find that to not be the most interesting thing for this track. So let's take that and reamp it through the Chase Bliss Genlos V2 to give it tape saturation, some warble, and maybe even some kind of like failure along the way to really give it some menace and some interest. And there's no way we are going to wrap this video up without taking a look at this unit behind me right here. This is the Echofix EFX3, a high quality, incredible analog electromagnetic tape echo machine. Uh, things like the Roland Space Echo have been essential pieces of music production since the day it hit the market, just legendary tape delay sounds. And this is the highest quality version of that kind of thing I've ever seen with a twist, which is it has four outputs on the back, one for each of the delay heads, allowing you to pan them anywhere you want in a stereo field. Now, if you're recording directly into your amplifier with that echo, you're only getting that mono echo sound, but we can take our amp, set it up, mic it up, and then using the canvas in real time, process our guitar through all four of those heads panned anywhere in our DAW. So for this final sound sample, we're going to set up an amplifier and mic it up, and then in real time, have that processed through the Space Echo using canvas reamp for massive stereo delay. Thank you.